We often take the language we speak for granted. We simply open our mouths and out come a stream of thoughts and ideas expressed through language. But have you ever thought about the specific language you speak? Why it has the words it does? And whether the specific language you speak actually affects the way you think? Profesora de Biología Animal y trabajo con muchos estudiantes. Scientists in the Cognition and Communication Research Center, COCO, at Northumbria University in Newcastle, research how the language we speak maps onto how we perceive the world, and whether speakers of different languages actually think about the world in different ways because of the language they speak. For example, take some very simple and short words in the English language, words such as in or on or this or that. It turns out that even these words differ really quite dramatically across languages. The coffee is in the cup. The cup is on the table. The handle is on the door. In English, we use the word in to describe where the coffee is located, in the cup. But we use the word on to describe the location of the cup, on the table, and the location of the handle, on the door. Spanish has a single word to describe these three different spatial situations. El café está en la taza. La taza está en la mesa. El mango está en la puerta. Dutch actually has two different words for on. A different word for the handle on the door from the cup actually on the table. Scientists in Coco are interested in two central questions regarding these language differences. First, how do these different languages map onto how people perceive and act in the world? Although languages might differ in how they carve up the world, speakers of different languages have the same basic bodies and perceptual systems. So, do languages map onto how we perceive the world in systematic ways? Second, do speakers of different languages actually think about and understand the world in different ways as a result of these language differences? We're constantly interacting with a world that's filled with objects and language. What we show in our studies is that reading about actions reactivates these experiences. So if we ask participants to read about an action like opening a pickle jar, we find that they're faster to engage in an action that matches that action. For example, in one experiment, people turn a dial anti-clockwise or clockwise to show the language describing actions. A person is faster to turn the dial and read about an action when turning their hand in the same direction as the action referred to in the sentence. Red square on the pink dot glass. We're investigating demonstrative use. Now demonstratives are words that help us describe which objects we're referring to, this object or that object. These words are interesting because they're some of the most common words across all languages. They're also some of the words that we learn first when we're learning language as a child. This yellow heart. Here in this laboratory, we're taking a scientific approach to seeing exactly what circumstances we use this and that in. And what we're, what we're finding is that this is predominantly used for locations that we can reach. This yellow heart and that we tend to use when we're referring to your objects that are beyond our reach. That red triangle. This is interesting because it turns out from other psychological research that the brain deals with near space that you can reach and far space in two slightly different ways. So the use of this for close things and that for things beyond reach maps on to how the brain actually works and perceives the world. So scientists are beginning to understand exactly how words describing object locations and actions map onto how people perceive and interact with the world. But do the different languages we speak tell us anything about the way people think? English uses this and that. Other languages communicate other things when they're indicating where something is. For example, that the object is uphill or downhill, that the object belongs to them or belongs to somebody else. We're investigating whether those differences that are clearly used in other languages also affect how English speakers use this and that. Place your one pound coin on the yellow dot. For example, in one experiment, people describe the locations of objects, where the objects are either owned by them or owned by someone else. This pound coin. In another experiment, people describe the locations of objects, where the objects are either visible or hidden from view. That yellow star. 
These differences are explicit in other languages. Although we're not aware that things like ownership or visibility affect our English usage, those things do in actual fact affect how we use this and that in English. In other experiments, scientists in Coco have tested whether the language a person speaks affects what they remember about the world. One way in which we've tested cross-linguistic differences is to examine simple relations like the coin is in or on the hand. In English, the coin is in the hand, but when I change the concavity, it's now on the hand. In Spanish, it's always en la mano. Is it the case that English speakers with two different words, one for in and one for on, actually have a better memory for the position of the hand than Spanish speakers? The answer is no. There are no differences in memory for the hand position. So speakers of different languages, despite quite amazing language differences, may not be so different after all.